like you doing us doing you. Yeah. Lot. No. I like no, you meant yeah. You meant to be like Rob. Who's doing Rob? All the who's doing Rob? All the <laughs> no, no, you <laughs> do it again. It. Tell us what we sound like. So yeah. yeah. Like, How do we Thanks sound for like joining us and actually turning up on time this week, Rob? Yeah, yeah. That's that's <laughs> that accurate. Was that's accurate. That's exactly that was what we sound like. How do you Canadian? Yeah. No. Say. <laughs> Hello, folks. Welcome back. I got up on time this week. Yay! No, no, Robin Rattle. No, Robin Rattle. I just didn't go to sleep. That was the trick. So, so tomorrow will be fun, is what I'm hearing. Yes, tomorrow will be fun. How is everyone doing? Great. Great. Good, Good thanks. Good thanks. That was so oh. enthusiastic, Mel. You want to curb that, curb that enthusiasm a little bit there? Cheers. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, go show. I was going to say, I tried another wetlander activity this week. Ooh. Oh, I love hearing nice. about your wetlander adventures. Yeah, yeah. I visited um, wetlander children. So this, this was oh. news to oh. me. Wetlander mm -hmm. children exist. They don't, wetlanders don't just like spring out of lakes. Puddles? Yeah. So that was yeah, I shock. thought they kind of budded. Yeah. You know, me too. Like from all of the plants and the I green stuff. They were like birthed in kiddie pools, you know, like the plastic pools. Oh, right? oh that would make oh. sense. Kiddie pools. Mm -hmm. yeah, why we all uh, have them. Yeah, because yeah. they're kids. Well, yeah, because I mean, when when like Aiel give birth, we like save the water, right, mm -hmm. and then we drink it later because it's super mm -hmm. nutritious, yeah. right? Even if it's well, a little green, that's out okay. Six to ten enemies easily. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But yeah, so these wetlander children, um, they were pretty fun. We had a we had a good time. Some of them wanted to learn about this stuff called electricity. So we made lights turn on. That was fun. But the interesting thing we did was we had this thing called origami they made me do. Mm -hmm. okay. So it didn't seem very useful at first. They made me make this bird type animal that doesn't actually even fly. Apparently it's a water bird called a crane. I was very confused about this whole bird dedicated to water but then mm -hmm. it got better because she made me a little bookmark out of her origami mm -hmm. so that was but then the coolest thing i learned origami now has a purpose we made a knife. <gasps> yes <laughs> knife nice looks like yeah. looks like that could really paper cut you right oh. like there's at least three edges on this that could almost make you bleed so i was very wow. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Nice. Uh, Melindra, what did you get up to this week? Um, I definitely needed more sleep this week. And um, I didn't, I, I, I saw a lot of this Wetlander game that I started going to a lot last year called the Base Basey Ball. I don't know if you remember 
Rand talking about that, but uh, yeah, more of that. There was a lot of that happening this week. Yeah. Nice. Uh, ben and Chiad, how was your week? It's been good. It's been really busy. I recorded a podcast on Monday and that was really fun. And then I've got two to record this weekend. And I, one of them requires that I finish a book beforehand. And so I'm scrambling to try to finish the book. But what happens is I get on my couch and I read my book and then I fall asleep. So it's been difficult to try to finish this book before Sunday. So wish me luck. It's a good book. <laughs> it's good. It is good. I'm just tired. <laughs> I have eaten. Okay. Thank you, Shelly. <laughs> Rob, how was your week? <clears throat> my week? Yeah, my week was good. Um, did I do anything uh, that might surprise my Aiel co-host? I don't think so. No, I, I think I had a very, very chilled week. Uh, I am trying to catch up on some of my viewing materials because I am behind on a couple of uh, shows. Uh, so, so that's kind of what I've been doing in my spare time. You should talk about the coconut fire. Oh, the coconut yeah. fire. Okay, so I was uh, I was at work oh. the other day, and uh, I went I went <laughs> to work, and uh, <laughs> um, oh, by the way, we've uh, we've we've had a point made in chat. Oh, whoa. How long has it been like that? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, because I didn't change it today. So it must have been like that forever. Thank you, Sharnice. Sharnice wow. is a new book reader for everything. We need a copy <laughs> editor. And yep. Sharnice, you're hired. <laughs> that is great. Um, anyway, so I, I went into work on uh, Monday. I had the later shift. So I started at half past 10. We had a new guy. And I got there, and my boss, the senior sous chef, <clears throat> he was very stressed. Not normally very stressed. Um, but he was quite stressed, and everyone else was a little bit frazzled. It had been a frantic morning. They were trying to prep for Pancake Day, which was Tuesday. Um, I believe that's known as Fat Day someday, sometimes. Fat, um, Tuesday. Fat Tuesday. Fat Tuesday. There we go. Yes. Fat mm -hmm. Tuesday for Marty. There we go. Um, but it's all to do with, like, Lent and... And, and things like that. Uh, this anyway, is, did, is this not something you actually know about? Uh, mm -hmm. I was like, you make pancakes on Pancake Day. That's what I know. Um, oh, I mean, so I love that oh, version okay. of it. I'm totally down for that. <laughs> it, it comes, like, it comes pancakes, from right? uh, because you, you give up like the eggs and butter and and other things like that, and um, so you just need to use them all up. And so the most appropriate thing to make is pancakes because it uses all the things that you need to get rid of and use up prior to Lent. Um, I know that much. Anyway, uh, so I got there and everyone's under feeling pressure because we're trying to prepare for the following day. Uh, we serve pancakes. So obviously, you know, we, it was going to be busy on that item the following day. And um, I said to chef, I was like, how's it going? I'm like, it's been all right this morning. He's just like, don't ask chef, don't ask. I'm like, oh boy, what's happened? And uh, he said, uh, well, the new guy <clears throat> set the coconut on fire. And I was like, what? <laughs> and yes, so we put uh, toasted coconut shavings on our French toast. Uh, and we Yum. buy it, skated coconut, untoasted, and then we toast it ourselves by either placing it in the oven for a short period of time or putting it under one of those overhead grills you see in kitchens quite often. Uh, also, for a short period of time. He placed it under the overhead grill for a long period of time, shall we say, to the point where flames were quite literally pouring out of said machine. And I do mean pouring out. Not like, oh, there's a bit of smoke there. Imagine if someone had, like, put wood and gasoline on a tray and then placed it under a grill. So Nathan's like, you, you, should, you should probably take that out, bro. That's, that's on fire. And uh, he's like, oh, okay. So he takes it out and just puts it lower down on the base and slides it back in. And the flames just continue. So Nathan then takes it out and goes um yeah so it was uh he said he managed to set uh we had a coconut fire in the morning so everything so was safe is is new guy still with you uh new guy uh <laughs> yeah new guy still with us <laughs> <laughs> wow. i um i'm not gonna say that's the worst thing i've ever seen in the kitchen uh i've seen far worse things done um so okay <laughs> okay 
Um, I'm That's... I'm assuming he uh, just forgot the coconut was there, and thus it stayed there too long, set on fire. Um, also, I didn't realize coconut was flammable. Apparently, it is. Mm. Um, and then misheard Nathan when he was just like, you know, take that down, and he, he thought he meant to take it down a shelf. I don't know. I will just just a note, Rob. Almost anything fl is flammable if you try hard enough. <laughs> well, or apparently in this what... case. That is what Aludra tells us. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that that was an interesting story. Yeah, so uh, we have uh, we we've had uh, an interesting collection of names for people that I've worked with in the past uh, at this at this place. One of them was uh, too stupid for toast. I will leave that there without context because it was funny. Mm -hmm. Then we had a guy who was worse than him. So we were like, well, how can you be worse than too stupid for toast? So uh, we designated him too stupid for life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Harsh. Damn. Harsh. But this this guy, oh, like, yeah. Uh, so now this guy is just uh, too stupid for coconut. Um, so <laughs> there's a theme, obviously, as you can tell. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Very creative. So that, that was a that was a, a yeah fun story for my week. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, let's talk about when the time and you know yeah stuff and like that. the yeah. news we got. Sure. It's been news. It's been a newsy week, uh, including things as of half an hour ago so uh we'll kick it oh. off and hopefully it doesn't mess up the music i don't know uh, about this news the no, daily it. veil spear brothers and sisters it is time to cover up your face. For the Wheel of Time has news, and we shall dance the spears with it. This is the Daily Veil. I am still just overwhelmed by that intro. Mm -hmm. I just have to say that. Especially because I just watched the, um, the video that Michael and Kate dropped. Um, and just like hearing them talk, and I was like, ah, oh, and they did this recording. Um, so, but yeah, it's it's been uh, as uh, Kev says, Twitter chaos is burning the midnight oil like Rob. I feel like the Twitter of chaos lives in America, based on when they normally do things. Just saying that, folks, or at least they live mm. on American timings. They live in those time zones between Eastern and Pacific. You know, not necessarily in America. They could be in Canada. They could be in South America. Anywhere, but um, you know. Yeah, they, uh, I wonder they're what busy part regardless. of the threefold land they live in. Exactly. So, shall we? What 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 news do you want to start with? There was a bit. Uh, well, for just just put congrats to Rosamond in chat. So maybe we should start with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start with that yes, one. Yes. Tell me live. all about whatever that is. <laughs> you didn't see? It? No, it wasn't. Like, no, I did it. It was very it was very so, short time so ago. Recently. Mm -hmm. This was uh, like thirty three minutes ago. This was posted. So one second while I. I'll switch my screens around because I didn't expect for some reason to be sharing that one. I don't know why I didn't think that. <clears throat> so while you're doing that, I'd like to know we've gone like a whole minute without the music being mentioned. I think we got it. I think so too. I but don't know. I, I I adjusted it whilst the intro to the segment was playing, so it wasn't at the same as the write previous it down. Segment, write it down. Write it down. <laughs> uh, but yes. Tweeted as of uh, 33 minutes ago, folks. Uh, let's zoom in on this. Uh, they what uh, the Wheel of Time account has tweeted out: "Glory to Armor Rain for her hashtag Audis 2023 nomination," and then hashtag the Wheel of Time. Uh, so Rosamund Pike, Rosamund Pike has been nominated uh, for a, a finalist award, Best Female Narrator, for her narration of The Eye of the World. Wow. Um, which is, cool. you know, that's a pretty cool that's thing, isn't it? so cool. Why yes. is it gendered? Maybe so they can make more awards. Maybe. Uh, possibly. Um, I know that um, originally narrations where it was like collaborative, um, mm -hmm. like Michael and Kate do, that was extremely rare because originally it was all on tape. And so you literally, someone had to record one piece and then it's like, oh, it's got to switch to you know, a, a different person narrating, they literally had to come into the same room or you had to send the tape and then they would start, you know, things like that. So um, maybe it just stemmed from that being the situation. Like it's always been one person and thus it's always been a man or a woman. And they just 
sadly haven't updated that yet to best narrator rather mm. than female or male. But also, like, you know, like Mel said, maybe they're like, we want lots of awards for narrators of all types. Yeah. So. Anyway, maybe so. Sorry. When I see things like that, um, I was, when I was a kid, fun little fact about Shelley, I was the Ontario Bible quizzing champion for under 13 girls. And as I've gotten to adult, I was like, why was that gendered? <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you guys said, whenever I see awards, I'm like, why was yeah. that gendered? Mm -hmm. It's fair. Yeah. It's uh, fair. Acting mm -hmm. awards are still gendered. Yeah, Luke, you're mm -hmm. right. Like Oscars, Emmys, all of that. Mm -hmm. We need this to get with very, the very times. True. I heard. Yeah. Program people. I heard uh, in oh, the, there's been a request. like Olympic sports mm -hmm. and stuff that originally there wasn't like like men and women categories. Oh. But women came in and started competing and beating the men. So they were like, we need to have men and women categories. So that, that, that sounds very <laughs> ac I would imagine that's a very accurate uh, situation. <laughs> there was a request in chat. So I just need to do something. Oh, hold a hold, hold fire for a second, ladies. There you go. And it, let's, let's go the whole hog. Butt rock. It's, it's weird. You call that a hog. I'm staring at that. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting choice of words for that photo. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so <laughs> anyways, sorry, sorry to derail, but no, no, that's fine. Point out when things are uselessly gendered, like say Legos. What? Like when they have like Legos that are gendered or any of those things. Anyways, it's congratulations, Rosamond. I yes. you were amazing. That's so cool. I haven't listened to that yet. Have any of you? Have you guys? I <laughs> have not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did uh, did Wolf Brother? Uh, uh, I almost yet? spit my tea out. Thank you, Wolf Brother. <laughs> <laughs> I, Glenn, thank you for letting us know that archery, athletics, badminton, equestrian, judo, sailing, shooting, swimming, table tennis, tennis, and triathlon are now uh, degendered at the Olympics, huh, which yeah. is really good, uh, cool according wins. to an article that uh, Glenn has just read. So. Uh, Cool. More news, folks. Who's going to Jordan Cotton this year? Most people. Sadly, Shelley's not. But Shelley, you have valid reasons because you have other important travels to make. So that's totally fair. Um, Got to go back to the land of Mad Men again. There we go. See, uh, they are loving it in chat, by the way. They're telling us um, it is so amazing. Surely brings books alive. Village Mattress says it is. A, it's fantastic. Uh, but folks, if you are going to Jordan Con, there is going to be something pretty incredible there for you to bid upon in the charity auction and that is this script so this is a very rare uh, wheel of time script cover that was signed by rosamund pike yosha zoe sophie i mean look at all those signatures here there's like i'm sure rafe's probably on there um kate's on there um yeah there's there's a lot of Lot of, this yeah. is episode 100 and 106, episode 6, The Flame of Tavalon. <laughs> I don't know why I said 106. I'll just read that on the screen there. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome if we had 106 episodes? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know, McGunn. I have upgraded from probably not to probably, Sorry. hopefully, just for this. <laughs> um, but, yeah, this is, this is pretty insane. Um, so, let's see who was tagged. Taylor Olympia, Hamad, Daniel Haney, Madden, Jennifer, yeah. Kate, Priyanka, Alvaro Morte, Marcus, um, just to name some of them are on there. So that's that's pretty mad. Uh, this will be uh, in the online auction open on April 23rd. And um, all the money from it will go to... Oh, wait, is this... This is not a Jordan Con, is it? No. Oh, this I thought this was a Jordan Con. Lost, which does right. all of those online... Options. Right, my apologies. Okay, so you don't need to go to Jordan Con for this. I think it's because Jordan Con retweeted it. That's what mm. I think I saw. Yeah. Uh, you okay. should still go to Jordan Con if you can. Yes, mm -hmm. still go. Yeah. But you can bid on this regardless of where you are. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, damn. I mean, I quote tweeted it. I'm, like, a few people have. Um, what did I say? Um, Mel, may the stabbiest IEO win. Uh, <laughs> Twitter type be brave. There is an upcoming personal financial <laughs> crisis. <laughs> very true. Very fair. 
Uh, it's episode six. I need it. Also benefits cancer. So I reign forever. Nice. Uh, mark your calendars is April 23rd. I'm just saying, folks, it's my birthday on the 24th. I'm just saying. So, you know. <laughs> Somebody um, went extra <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, oh boy, we're going to be so broke bidding on this, uh, which is true. Mm -hmm. uh, I am going to call all of your um, bosses and have them threaten to have, you know, furloughs for just like, just the threat of it for like a month or however long this auction <laughs> Yeah, um, but it's out. it's going to be pretty wild. This, uh, so that's very very cool news. Um, I'm excited to see how much that raises. It should be an awful awful amount. Um, so, uh, and apparently, I share a birthday with Pavara's nephew. Aww. Aww. it's very very cool. So it's a good day. Twenty fourth. Um, we also. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that funny? Because you're like. That's my birthday, guys. In case anyone it's forgot, the 24th. It's the 24th. <laughs> the 24th of April. It was literally, I had Happy Birthday sung to me at the Dusty Wheel Live at JordanCon last year on Aww. that day. Like, it's difficult for, you know, it's kind of out there. I don't need to worry about people not knowing. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> the only thing anyone did for you for your yeah, birthday. Nothing guys. else happened uh, on your birthday. Nothing special. Nobody nope. did special anything Special shot glasses you. or yeah. not being nope. bored. Nope. Nothing, Nothing else. from your co-hosts. We completely yeah. forgot. Nobody put you a ribbon. Need anything for you? Oh, I need to pull my headphones out, man. Nice you to know, know where we stand next to the dusty wheel. Yeah. This one. I Someone did pull my headphones out. Singing happy birthday to you beats out That's all it? the other stuff, huh? Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh shush. Mm -hmm. I guess right. we have to sing this year then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we I'm sound like whole... we sounded in the cold cold open to you yet? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so, Guy Roberts got some presents this week. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, not from me. And it was not his birthday. What's going on right now? Uh, people give him presents even on his not birthday? Yeah. So, Kitsu Nagani stopped by to... Uh, to <laughs> I don't even know where now. Uh, and is at uh, his Shakespeare Company's uh, site, and uh, he was uh, in the US. Sorry, Prague. No, I already said Prague, but like you know, I can't remember the name of the place in Prague. Uh, Prague but dropped up company. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's gone now. <laughs> I guess he's we gonna know the now. now. He probably just wanted to go to sleep, so we can <laughs> continue. Have no sense of humor. This is so strange. I don't know. Like, I don't get it. We've tried. Yeah. It's been almost a year and a half. A year and a half. A copy it's editor. A year and a half. And a channel Charnese. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah this, Charnese. this is literally how we show love, and he runs away. Yeah. yeah. I can send Charnese the link, and she can come and join us. I'd love um, that. I miss Sharnice the first time she was on. So. I love her so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, look, he's sleeping. Just Aww. as I I'm taking my nap. That's so no, sweet. I'm <laughs> right. Anyway, um, Uno stopped by and gave Uno some very awesome gifts, including very cool stickers and this original sketch watercolor combination which is stunning uh and the print here so uno was very happy about that rightfully so because they're very awesome was there anything else i missed uh i don't think so no um, no yes. nothing else happened this week what yeah. was the thing i did a live stream? oh the, the thing yeah your live stream <laughs> isn't there something i didn't watch it some sort of building in a place with two water bodies i don't know what they call it Some you mean this construction situation oh yeah yeah something like yeah that. yeah what an excessive waste of wood <laughs> hmm. if i had wood like that i would put it to use in different ways uh, i'm always looking for more wood yeah i know seriously it does like seem like they can put their they yeah. do put the wood in elaborate configurations though like a lot of different yeah. positions, so that's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, but it's hard to stick that in anything. Not that. Mm -hmm. Not that. 
I feel like there's a, a a word from our sponsor opportunity here of um, mm. are you lacking wood in your life? It's true. Mm. Mm -hmm. This uh, sounds like it would uh, complement Viagara very well. Um, <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, the wonderful folks of What Series have had a couple of sources come to them and be like, hey, they're rebuilding Emmons Field. And that we have had pictures. I did a live stream of this on Tuesday. Um, you can go check it out. While you were running away, Rob, we were discussing. We hope you realize that we respect you, that we can take the piss out of you this much. It's true. It's kind of true love and respect it's, that we it's actually out of love. It's true. We would we wouldn't treat just any wetlander this badly. This badly. <laughs> uh Rajesh, yes, I'm with you there. It does feel like just yesterday we watched season two. Mm, yeah. Um, so. Great good. season. Great season. Great season. Yeah. Yeah. Zul is right. Out of control. <laughs> a little bit. Um, sorry, Zul. Sorry, us. Zul. <laughs> Tell us what to do. Right. I like it when so, you yeah. order me around. Zool. I do. Yeah. yeah Tell us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Look at this good scouting. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Quite the scout report. You can tell they found the right amount of cover, even though mm -hmm. that's like, you know five-year-old level All right. cover. Do you know maybe. what? I I know there's a lot of joking going on in chat, but like, if this happens, I'm gonna die. <laughs> that would be pretty amazing. That would be awesome. awesome. Like, can we get a trailer on the 24th? It's in two months' time. Can we get a trailer on the 24th? Ooh, that that'd would be, be amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Because then, fun, they usually, like, the trailer, yeah, the trailer comes out, like, what, two or three months before the show, so that would mm -hmm. be May, June, the show will come out in July. Mm -hmm. You know, that would, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Uh, so we're going to discuss a little bit more on this later because we're going to have a chat about uh, where Bane and Shiad and our favorite threesome, as it was tweeted out, uh, will appear. Um, well, what would you like to talk about next, ladies? We're call I'm calling the news done, unless there's any more news you want to bring up. Oh, okay. No. Done? Done. Done. Okay. Yeah, unless you'd like to investigate more wood. Mm -hmm. No, I guess not. Just me. <laughs> no, I was happy to keep discussing the lack of good wood here in this part of the threefold land. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why my favorite threesome is me and Matt and Ashandari. Mm. Yeah, it stands itself. Yep. It stands itself. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Okay. But what would you like? What segment would you like to do next, ladies? <laughs> we have segments today. Yeah. Do we? Uh, let's roll. You um, whatever you want. It's your birthday on April twenty fourth, so you should just. <laughs> I was going to say this show has very much gone off the rails today. <laughs> I would say, it's where's Leia? We need you, Leia. <laughs> I do not have the spoons to deal with this today. <laughs> Ooh. Do you need us to stop, Rob? No, I just I feel like I'm totally lost control. Do you have the okay. forks? All right, pets. Here's Kevin Marmot. <laughs> Look at that. So Aww. cute. Um, whose cute beard is that? Going with the, I the cat is very cute. Yes, cute cat, but also cute beard. Yes, it's a very cute beard. Can attest. What uh? What did we d determine? Um, the the uh, extra furry bits on Marmot's face are called uh, in uh, muzzle, show. Puff. muzzle puffs. Right. Yes. Muzzle puffs. Muzzle puffs. Muzzle That's, puffs. Yeah. yeah. So that that is that is Marmot with her muzzle puffs, and then there's Kev's Kev with his muzzle puffs. Aww, it's true. Oh, oh, I can't handle that. That's too cute. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Uh, what other pets did we get? Big fan of that photo. So wow. 
we have Brother Zachariah. Uh, we have his cat, Harley. Oh, wow. So these were all um, posted in the Discord server during last week's show. We didn't get a chance to actually show them because uh, it was happening while we were doing the show. So we have a few pets to share this week. Nice. That's a gorgeous coloring kitty. I, I love tortoise shell kitties. Wow. And that look on that face looks like mm. about to, like, I'm going to stab you. She's yeah. a wise one, I think. Very yeah. aggressive. Mm. Mm. Like it. Yeah. If there was ever a wise one cat, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Uh, and then Registered Nerd shared their three dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Not quite sure the pronunciation. I think it's Siren and then Geely or Geely and King Mojo. Mm. Look how well behaved. Aww. I'm in a so I'm in a fitness group with registered nerds, so I see these dogs' butts a fair amount. They are pretty cute. <laughs> Aw. I, I have also <laughs> seen the butts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are uh Equal opportunity, but appreciators here. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. Well, now I'm jealous. I want to see the butts. They're pretty adorable. <laughs> they look like they're waiting for a treat. I think they probably are. Probably. Uh, this is Village Mattress with Coco, Augie, and Duke. Aww. Coco. Hi, buddies. Look at them. That so is a cozy-looking couch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, Coco, and I... um, Coco came online, so... Uh, Village Mattress there are a few, a few uh, similar discords. So I've seen pictures of Coco since she was a puppy. And holy Aww. crap, she's a cute is, little dog. Wait, is Coco the leftmost one? Coco's the one on his lap. Um, I'm a big fan of the, Coco's foot. Like, mm. flailed over it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Look at all that. She's just, just going to, like, lounge on my fellow doggo. Yep. Uh, may I also point out the reading material at the back of the photo there on the desk? Highly approved. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. You always need to it's have like that handy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have uh, another one from Brother Zachariah. We have Jake. Oh, Hi, wow. Jake. So cute. So, wait, Brother Zachariah was also the tortoise kitty, right? So, no, the tortoise kitty. And, and tortoise and doggy. You're oh, yeah, tortoise you're doggy, right. Yeah. They look alike, oh. don't they? Yeah. They do. They look like they could be cousins. Mm -hmm. Aw, adorable. They're so cute. This looks like a puppy. Yeah, um, Jake looks very young. I think, yeah. That's a happy dog. So cute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing your pets with us. We love them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ew. You we'll can share any more, or you can get more pets so that you mm -hmm. can share them with us. Yes. Super fun pet time. We want yeah. all the pets. Yeah. Yeah. There was a tornado in my town, my city, whatever, recently. And the pet shelter was destroyed. They did like, it was like, it did like a million dollars in damage to the shelter for the pets. So lots of groups been trying to raise money to help rebuild the shelter. I'm He's not. Saying, I'm no. not. I'm not saying it that. I'm saying it's something that Kevin did. Uh, I'm. I'm really, gonna go look right now. <laughs> no, I already got notified. Kevin, stop it. <laughs> right, folks. We have a serious moment now. I actually need you to be serious now, folks. Okay. Um, be serious because yeah, we <clears throat> we need to pay tribute. Um, uh, because yeah. Goat Brother shared something, you know, very, very important to him with us this week, and uh, we want to share it with you. Um, and that is, uh, very sadly. Uh, we have a, a memorandum of threefold pets uh, post here. Um, his beautiful, lovely, gentle horse, uh, Daria. Am I saying that right? I think Daria. Um, unfortunately, great. had to be put to sleep uh, earlier this week. Um, 25 years ago, uh, he brought Daria with uh, his with his wife, and uh, you know they've had many wonderful years together. Uh, and uh, mm. unfortunately, that's that time has come to an end which is extremely sad um so what a gorgeous we, voice. yeah we send you much love and uh you know many hugs at this time sir because that is you know quite a loss mm -hmm. so. so i feel like we should ramen rattle daraya 
Yes. Yeah. I, I hope the memory of that beautiful horse and 25 years with it mm -hmm. sustains you in the days of sadness to come. Mm. It's pretty she's awesome to have had that long with him. Mm -hmm. And that she's out running across all the fields in the Rainbow Bridge now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Getting all the apples. Yeah. And we'll give you extra hugs at Jordan Con, Goat Brother. Yes, mm -hmm. we will, Goat Brother. So. Okay. You may resume being silly now. Can I look at Kevin's tweet now? Yeah, you can go look at Kevin's tweet now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. While Kevin, you're looking at Kevin's tweet, Kevin, no, I'm not put on screen. Bring no, Kevin's you. tweet on screen. No, no. And if you, if any of you try and bring Kevin's tweet on screen, I will see you attempting to do it and I will stop you. Mm. Oh. But can you, though, oh. really? Yes, I can, because I can see when you share your screen. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But what mm. if we just, like. Right, but we can still that. share our screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I can stop you. I can cancel it. And we can unstop right. you. We can no, uncancel it. Just go look at Twitter. <laughs> Just go look at Twitter on Twitter. Because there's yeah. I'm assuming yeah. everyone watching this already has their own screen. <laughs> no, also, that's not how this works. I'm gonna retweet yeah. it from the show account. <laughs> <laughs> it is chaos tonight. This is like <laughs> Is this the Hinder stream show? Like, what's yes. going on? I, I thought you just said, if this, know, is like, this the end? Year ago, I was like, you know what would be fun? <laughs> we all get on a show every Thursday night. You brought this upon yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a great idea. There's no way this could backfire on me. <laughs> what, what is going on tonight? <laughs> Kev is crying. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you? I can just see the chat go and like rate the screen. Everyone retweet, please share. <laughs> Killing me. We did break, yeah. yes. We got a snort too, which is, yeah. you know, that's an achievement. <laughs> that is a high praise. Sh oh. Shanice, I just saw the retweet pop up from the show. <laughs> <laughs> You wouldn't no, let me share the screen, so I shared it another way. Now I gotta go look at Twitter. Mm. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah. Shelly, you don't have to go on Twitter if you don't want. I can send it to you. So no, yeah, yeah. I, I think we need to put it, uh, pin it in the Discord. Yeah, that yeah. sounds like a good plan. I'm gonna do that right now. <laughs> right, uh, folks, we... Uh, even even Dana's on board and she's retweeting it now. <laughs> yes. No one knows where it's at. <laughs> uh, am I getting punked? Like she's a role model too. She's a role model <laughs> and a pillar of honor I'm, I'm in gonna, our community. I'm gonna... So I'm gonna redo. I'm gonna redo the thumbnail on this video and just be like, you know, threefold chaos. Malki yeah, three <laughs> threefold chaos. Watch Malky talks get punked for ninety minutes. Um, <laughs> 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 wow. Okay, we were going to talk about board games or just games in general, weren't we tonight? Uh, well, yes. So we got some good feedback about what to watch while you wait. And uh -huh. so, seeing as we apparently don't have season two yet, we figured we'd give you some other ideas and things to do. So, every if you guys have anything you want us to talk about that can fill time, we would love to hear it. Hobbies, music, movies, um, you know, sports, whatever. Sure, we'll get on and we will plug something. I'm happy to plug the Canadian women's soccer team. Everybody should go watch them. Um, Kelly but is happy to plug the Canadian women's soccer team. People don't know this, but Christine Sinclair is my wife someday. <laughs> She's already married, but I think we'll make it work. Um, you know, I think one day we're just going to run into each other in Vancouver at a sushi place. And I'm going to see her and she's going to see me and our eyes are going to meet. And we'll just be like, hey, you're the all-time goal scorer in the entire world. And you've led the Canadian women's soccer team to like a gold medal, a World Cup lead. And I am a data person in Toronto. It's kismet. <laughs> I mean, we've put it into the universe. It's going to happen now. Yeah, it's out yeah. there. It's going to happen. So 
I will happily talk plug. about the Canadian soccer team yeah. forever. Plug them. Go on to well, shit. <laughs> I got yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> When uh, when we talked about uh, games and such, uh, we had some people respond. Uh, Sulin, uh, a fellow maiden, responded and said uh, that uh, she definitely needs uh, the board game recommendations. And she would like to state for the record yeah. that this is not her entire collection of board games. But it is a very impressive set of board games because the tower of board games is almost the same height as her. So Yeah. I mean, clearly, she needs, she's in desperate need of board games. Yes. Yeah. We need to help her. We so, ladies, uh, who has some games for Sulin and everyone else who wants to go first? Don't all shout out at once. I still haven't one. decided. Because <laughs> you said two, and I was like, I want three, and then I couldn't decide. So well, I uh, you can have three. I only have one, so you can have three if you want. I, I put all three of your choices in. So, how's that? So... So Ma 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 Dra 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 what what <laughs> what is going on with your names? I've just noticed all. Of <laughs> wow, it took you quite a while. I mean, I saw Bane and Sheed, but I. <laughs> That's because you stare at her all the time. I mean, well, yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, tell us about the games you'd like to suggest. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So the first game that I want to talk about is called Dominion. And this is like a deck building game for those of you who are familiar with that genre of games. Um, but it's also, and part, part of the reason I wanted to recommend it is it's also a game you can play for free online um, with your friends from all over the world. Um, so the way this game works is you pull out a bunch of different sets of the cards and the game is different every time you play because you can combine the cards in a bunch of different ways. And you're trying to create basically the scenario with the set of cards that's going to um, make you have dominion over your other players. You um, try and gather enough points to buy duchies and provinces and villages and stuff and um if you get enough points you basically win the game but there's a million different ways to go about um winning the game and every time the cards have um the cards give you basically extra abilities to get more money so that you can buy more things or do bad things to other players or attack them and that sort of stuff so it's 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 a very strategic um very fun game and uh and it's a really good brain um testing game that's pretty easy to like learn the mechanics of and then not so easy to master so that's the game i want to play cool i like it and there's a million expansions which is fun nice and you had other suggestions as well we can talk about those or do you want to should we go around and do one at a time i'm gonna go like this okay shelly uh, I'll talk about, what was I going to talk about first? Dutch Blitz? Dutch Blitz. Okay. So I don't know if anyone else in this chat happened to grow up in a very religious family, but um, growing up in a church, some of us weren't allowed to play with cards. And so the Dutch, being the wonderful people that they are, invented this game that yet being a card game did not count as cards, so we could play it at church. And so anyone who grew up in a church family um probably remembers this game it is a speed card game basically there's play for four people and the idea is to get as many of your cards out on the table as fast as possible um and interestingly i, I grew up in a pacifist church and you have never seen people get as violent as playing this <laughs> game as to try and like rush out as fast as they can to try and get it all out so anyways long story short four teams you get as many cards out as you can by stacking cards numerically on top of each other lots of house rules it's basically like if speed war and snap all had a card baby this game would be it it's very inexpensive very easy to learn a lot of fun um it's like kids play it adults play it you can tell people who've been playing it their whole lives because they are just very quick like it's ridiculous how fast their hands move and it's a very ideal game because you have to be very very quick at things so yeah i really i love dutch blitz i've been playing it since i was a kid i always recommend it to people i bring it to camps um our mutual friend gt 
kicked my ass at it last time we hung out. So highly recommend this game. Easy to learn. Expansion pack so you can play with eight people. Should you really want to, there is a live life-size Dutch Blitz you can buy that you can play in a yard. So you have wow. to run the birds across. <laughs> And so if you wanted to add whole body, body physicality to Dutch Blitz, that is a game you can buy. So highly recommend Dutch Blitz. That's going to be my first card game. Nice. Okay. Wow. So, so I'm really curious about the, like, the logical um, underlayer of why this is not considered a card game. Like... That is it is, is it kind of like how like I think it's because you it shouldn't have... drink caffeine but chocolate's okay is it like kind of all like in the semantics uh the the over basically cards are closely related to tarot decks and if you grew up in a, in a religious family sometimes anything that smacked of tarot witchcraft paganism wasn't allowed and because mm. these have no um suits it's literally just colors and little men and women little like dutch men and women they can't be used to predict the future. There's no suits to any of them. There's nothing like tarot. Um, so yeah, so that's why they're um, like that. So yeah, anyways, it's uh, it's fun. It, it it filled the loopholes so my sisters and I could murder each other uh, within the rules on Saturday nights. Nice. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, yes, Rob, we see it. <laughs> Well, you know, it was happening and people were being very quiet about it, so. <laughs> I didn't notice it until you put the poll up. <laughs> yeah. And then I thought you you uh, you might notice it, so. Uh, Punk and Dunk Rob, uh, tell us uh, what game you picked for tonight. <laughs> uh, so I picked Flux, which is a, another card game. A card game that is not a card game. Uh, and this game was basically built for nerds because there's... A million versions of it and they're all very nerdy like there's a sci-fi star flux there's a zombie flux there's pirate flux there's a doctor who flux so pretty much like any nerdy thing you could think of they have um my personal favorites are zombie star and pirate flux and those are the ones i've played the most um and it's a really special game to me because I learned it when I started um, a group at my job. I started a group with young adults. So people who are like in their early 20s, like in emerging adulthood. And uh, it was a group I started myself and I was really proud of the group and I was able to pull in a lot of people in that age group. And uh, we learned together how to play this game. I have some with me right now, actually. Um, and it just really, it was a really fun thing to play, but also it sort of, I don't know if I just like to make deeper meanings out of things that don't need to have a deeper meaning, but I feel like it's uh, it's a game where the rules and the goal is constantly changing. So I feel like for me, I'm someone who can get like too orderly and too um, attached to like the way things are supposed to be. And I feel like this game like helped me learn how to let go of that and just to be like, whatever, okay, the rule changed and I lost and they won immediately, that's fine. Um, so it's fun. It starts off with some basic rules and then you get to change the rules or, you know, steal something from someone else or change the goal of the game um, to meet, you know, the cards that you already have so you can win. And it moves really fast and you can play like several rounds, um, you know, within like a half an hour, you could play like five to 10 rounds, maybe even. So I just really like it. And the cards are funny too. Like they have zombies and stuff on them. Like this one says Larry the zombie. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Which made That's me think of cool. Betty the Trollic. So, yeah. I love it. That's my game. It's, it's a, a good game. Yeah, yeah, sounds like a good game. I uh, I look forward to playing it at some point. Uh, Mel, you had other choices? Yes. Okay. Please share one of them. Okay. So actually these games are my other two choices, which is why I couldn't really pick between them is because they're actually kind of similar in that they are kind of D and D light games. Like they give you scenarios that you have to try and like re eat, reach a goal. You play a character and the character has a certain set of, of values and that sort of stuff. So we'll start with betrayal at house on the hill. So this one's more like, 
a haunted house board game. So you're moving through a haunted house and the thing you don't know is that one of the other players who's moving through the haunted house with you is secretly going to betray you and is trying to make like all the haunted ghosts in the house win and be able to like attack you and that sort of stuff. And and so you know you're trying to figure out who's the betrayer. You're trying to figure out who is the Moradin in this situation. And um, and and sometimes you get to be, and sometimes you're on the side of, of the people who are trying to escape the house successfully without dying. And the um, and the it's it's a card based board game, a tile based board game. So the rooms keep changing. The rooms can move into different places, and the entrances that you. You went into one room and then you go back out the same entrance and you might be in a completely different space. Um, so it's, again, it's a game that is never the same game twice and um, lots of fun and, you know, adds that kind of competitive edge with a horror twist to it. So mm -hmm. it's it's a super fun, entertaining game to play. That, yeah, that did sounds... Did you put the picture up of that? I did not. Um... Which one was it? Sorry, betray betrayal. You said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I did not put the picture up. There it is. Yeah, this one. Ooh. Yeah. So there's a traitor's tome. So like each like uh, the traitor gets to like kind of secretly look at what's going on in their book before the game starts, so that you you know what you have to do to like win your scenario, and the other and the other team has to do something else to win their scenario. So it's pretty fun. Mm, very cool. Okay. <clears throat> um so I did have a game. Uh but mine is mine is is a card game and isn't a card game. So uh mine it's going to sound very basic at first but let me explain this version. So it is Monopoly. Uh it is a game that people, you know, the the you know fight and argue over the family fighting game I believe uh wise punker of rob described it as um but I never get into the fights, um, in my experience anyway. It's always a lot of fun. But this particular version, um, uh, yes, Judy, we will add uh, a list of these games. Uh, will be added in. Um, so the version I played, and I don't own this version, but I did play it once. Uh, and it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, if you look on the screen now, and I will describe it for you if you're not uh, <laughs> able to look at your screen currently. It's an electronic version. Oh, and so you get cards. Every every player has like a card that represents their their bank rather than having like notes and things like that. And then there's a machine where you put the card in one side or the other and you swipe it and it will add or minus the amount that you've typed in and it will tell you when you're bankrupt and all those sorts of things. And like you play in the millions. You don't play like this is worth, you know, you owe me two hundred dollars. It's like you owe me seventeen point five million. Um, you know, and just things of that nature. And it's I don't know. It just made it more entertaining than Monopoly, especially because you didn't have to do the maths. I mean, who who enjoys doing math? Like you do. You. <laughs> <laughs> no, but when you're playing a board game, do you want to have to spend time and be like, oh, count this and count? This. You know, you don't have to dish out the money initially and be like, you get okay, so you get like a hundred dollars in this, and you get fifty dollars in that, and then twenty dollars in this. You just be like. Give you a card, type in the number, boof, there's your money. You know, it just, it made the game, it gave it a different dynamic. And I just really enjoyed it. I mean, Monopoly's a lot of fun anyway, whether you play it right or wrong. Um, so. <laughs> Have you ever played Monopoly Deal? Monopoly Deal. Uh... Yeah, it's a card-based version of Monopoly. It moves really fast. It, like, kind of takes all the, like, super fun parts of Monopoly and turns it into, like, a kind of a card-based game. It's super fun. I have not. Uh, Wolf Brother mentioned it in the chat too. Mm -hmm. I like the version of Monopoly. I don't know if anyone's ever played it this way other than me, but the one where you shuffle all of the properties at the beginning and you just hand them out randomly and everybody uh, yes. starts with properties. I think oh. it's more fun that way. It's more fun and interesting. And then like you can bargain with each other. Like I'll give mm. you the third one if you want the third one of your color. And then, like, for something that you want. It's kind of fun. That's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good night, Shanice. I'm not going to lie. 
uh, good night, Charnese. Um, Monopoly is like, I would say one of the le leading cause of fights in my family. So <laughs> I was surprised when both you and Rob were like, I love Monopoly. I was like, I'm pretty sure someone in my family. I don't <laughs> love Monopoly. Oh, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when Rob said he loves Monopoly alone and the rest of us just made fun of him for an hour. Mm, yeah, um, yeah, that's how it happened. That's definitely how yeah. it happened. <laughs> I'm pretty sure someone once got stabbed by that dog in my family. So mm. I really? have a, like, are you serious? I'm sure blood was drawn at least once from this game. <laughs> right. Wow. I have a vivid memory of playing Monopoly at my grandparents' house as a kid. I don't know how old I was. But my mom was playing and she had to go to jail and I got incredibly upset, like on her behalf that she had to go to jail. And I was like, no, you, you can't send her to jail. She's my mom. Like, you can't do that. She has to, you have to let her out of jail. I was very mad and I wanted them to change the rules of the whole game so that my mom would never end up in jail. Aww. You guys just reminded me. So... One of the reasons I don't love board games is I am a notoriously bad dice roller. It's like the universe is like, oh, you study statistics? Fuck you. Um, <laughs> so basically, there's this version of Monopoly that's Sheepopoly or Sheep Monopoly. And so you buy fields and you get stud rams. And I was playing this with my friends. And so the first, we play a couple rounds and then my dice rolling kicks in. And my stud ram died twice in a row. So two rounds, my stud ram died. My whole field flooded. All my sheep got foot rot. My entire herd ended up dying of like some sheep disease. And by the end of the game, it, my friends were like, we are too sad to continue to play this board game with you. And they gave up because I, my dice rolls are so bad. I was making them depressed. So that is why wow. I don't tend to play a lot of board games, but that one, that Monopoly game is burned in my memory because it was just like everything bad that could happen did. It was like, imagine D&D &D just rolling like 15 nat ones in a row. That's what I did that game. That is quite extreme. Yep. Are you having okay. fun changing all of our names over and over again? <laughs> <laughs> You're changing them back, so it works. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I thought Shelly's was great. Dice rolls, uh, dice are my kryptonite or something like that. I think they I just are thought, my there? kryptonite. There we go. <laughs> I like uh, those stabby um, with game tokens too. That's good. Yeah. That is very and good. it is um, so accurate. It is. <laughs> uh, so, Shelly, you had another game you wanted to share with us. Sure. Far less violent. <laughs> and I get a sound effect. So I'm so you sorry. do. <laughs> mm hmm. Okay, one so of, the, one of my people are missing, so I have to kind of keep my eye on my phone. Sorry, uh -oh. not not in a bad way, just not here. Uh, and while we're doing that, I've realized that uh, in all of the punking and such, that uh, Twitter has gotten far more than it usually uh, gets. So goodbye, Twitter. You've had goodbye, almost Twitter. an hour. <laughs> my Twitter. Uh, but yes, tell us, Shelley, about your next okay. game. So my next game, uh, fair bit of a swing is called Mary Mr. Darcy. And I love this game. It is uh, basically, it's actually like if D&D &D was Jane Austen. So instead of your stats being like strength and wisdom and intelligence and charisma, they're like wit and beauty. And so you have to stack your stats in a way that you can get one of the gentlemen of uh, Pride and Prejudice to propose to you. Um, mm -hmm. Do you need a picture of Rob? Yes, you want the first one up? <laughs> so this, is, this is the game cover. It's called Marrying Mr. Darcy. It's a lot of fun. Uh, next one, please. Next picture. Yep. So you play as one of these ladies in the book. Um, basically, you have a set of stats and you're trying to build up your stats. So the first part of the game is called the courtship phase, where you attend different events. So in addition to like beauty and wit, there are secret cards you have called cunning cards. And so the cunning cards say things, uh, you can take it off the screen for a second. The cunning cards say things like, you, your conversation is so intelligent, you make one of your competitors look stupid, plus two cunning. And then you can give <laughs> that card to another lady at the table and ha make her have a consequence or you can keep it. And basically if you have enough cunning cards or the most cunning cards, you can in the proposal round, after you've done the courtship, you get to go first. 
Um, and then what's the next cards I had? I think I had an event card. Oh, Mr. Darcy. So this is the, the key. The goal is to be able to get this guy. The only key is if you play his sister, you can't propose to him because they have not Game of Thrones this. Lame. And then what's the next one? And <laughs> This is Old my maid. favorite card in the whole game. Uh, this is the Old Maid card. Nobody wants to marry you. <laughs> you, you are old. old. <laughs> Nobody wants to marry you. So you reverse a gold <laughs> Wow. <laughs> You can take that off wow. the screen, but yeah, the, basically you roll your dice and like, it's, I'm exaggerating. I can't remember the exact things, but it goes from like, you live alone and are eaten by your cats to a wealthy uncle takes you in and his nieces love you. Um, <laughs> it's very Victorian. Um, there is a pride Petrus and zombies um, expansion pack. Nice. Um, it's a yeah. good book. <laughs> yeah. And so when I played the game, I was like, I kept secretly hoping I would get the old maid card and I was like, screw you, I'm winning. But yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's silly and cheery and a little ridiculous. And sometimes it's just exactly what you need in the world is to try and marry Mr. Darcy. <laughs> I love it. That is that so is great. hilarious. That's hilarious. I love that you can end up being like Kitty or Lydia too. Which is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty ridiculous. That is, that is brilliant. All right, uh, and we have uh, one final game to share with you because yes. uh, Mel loves lots and lots of games. And I do, choose. yeah. Like to help you. I have a your tower last, taller than Zulin. <laughs> your last game that you sent was? Yes, this is Goonies. Goonies Never Say Die. Um, so this is like legit D and D light. There is um, one player takes the role of the dungeon master, and I think in Goonies they call it something very Goonie specific, but I'm blanking on what that is at the moment. Um, and and so they have one scenario book, and then all the players have another scenario. And as you navigate through the game, um, the dungeon master has like new clues to read to give to the Goonies so that they can figure out how to eventually get to the end solution and get the pirate's treasure and save their homes and all of that stuff, just like in the Goonies. So um, you can play like any of the Goonies and um, and they each have their own special power ups and they have special things like, um, uh, you know, like Data has all of the like special gadgets and stuff and then, <laughs> Um, there's just like, if you love the Goonies, this is a great game. It's super duper fun. And, um, for people who like playing D and D, but don't like the role playing part of it and the improv part of it, like if that stresses you out, this gives you a fun, just like scenario based, um, uh, adventure game to play with, with your friends and family without having oh, to do any so of that stuff. D and D for me, great. Uh, for me and Ben <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe so. Um, it, yeah, if it, you know, because not everybody loves doing that stuff, or it, it it causes a lot of stress, which is partly why D and D isn't isn't for everyone. But this one's just like getting to to do the adventure part without having to pretend to be somebody else. That's pretty nice. great. It's fun. I like it. All right. Uh, oh, we have a question. No, Megan says, "Do you get to play as one-eyed Willy?" Uh, yes. Well, the the Dungeon Master equivalent, and I, I wish I would remember what that name is. It's super clever. Um, uh, plays like the bad guys in all of the scenarios. So so they get to control like like the little like zombies or whatever, but also the big boss. And old One-Eyed Willie is one of the big bosses in one of the scenarios you can play. Nice. Yeah. Then I won't I won't go into them, but I have runner ups, including Settlers of Catan. Power Grid is a surprisingly fun game. Um, <laughs> it sounds so dorky, but it's actually a lot of fun. Wolf Brother mentioned Ticket to Ride. Um, those are Love a couple that games. One. That those are all awesome. great. Yeah, those yeah. are kind of my honorable mentions. Oh, Copper has come to say hello. Hi, Copper. You have a favorite game? His favorite game is uh, bite the mouse and try to pull its tail off. The toy mouse, not a real mouse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's round out the show with uh, discussing. Uh, oh wait, no, we had um, a uh, a game suggestion from Leia as well. Leia could not be here tonight mm -hmm. uh, because uh, she is 
traveling on the way to disneyland um, on the way to Disney, we are just being invaded by cats right now. Um, <laughs> cat o'clock. So, I feel bad I don't have a cat. It is, it is cat o'clock. Uh, so, but she recorded us a video um, from the airport. And uh, it's a little noisy because she's, you know, surrounded by a lot of people. Uh, but uh, she sent us this game suggestion. So we're going to play for you folks. Hey there, Goldies from JFK Airport. Um, I'm Ruth Mr. Slaya. Very sad I can't join you guys tonight. But I did want to give you my game recommendation, which I'm sure many of you have played. Uh, it's a game where you really get to know your friends or just the random people you're playing with. It's called Cards Against Humanity. It is hilarious. Uh, insightful and again like I said you just really 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 get to know people through their sense of humor how they pair things together there are many versions of Cards Against Humanity uh, there's extension packs and all that sort of stuff so the fun is just never ending with that game especially if you had a couple of glasses of wine like we do in the drunk part of the threefold land so anyways I uh, hope you're enjoying the show miss you all and see you next week Love you. Bye. So, yeah, uh -huh. it's that little message. It's fun. I love that she made that for us. Yeah. Uh, I love the... Uh, so, Gnome and Garden's like my cat's favorite game is being incredibly cute until she gets treats. And then once she gets the treats, setting into an evil little goblin. Uh, uh, Marmot's favorite game is called Sing Opera at Midnight. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's uh, that's apparently a great game. So you know, All right. you know what people should do? They should put their recommendations in the comments below. In the comments? In the yes. comments below? After yeah. you've liked and subscribed. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, and we had well, one second, let me find it. Uh, how to we we have a special how to play flux guide. Uh, which I oh, totally yeah, yeah. forgot to play uh, when we were talking about Flux. So one second while I get that set up and prompted, and we have a few minutes. We This comes courtesy of Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy has put this together. So Jimmy has been on our show before. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, uh, this is from a few years ago, and Jimmy um, was was playing with online personas, so he was trying to figure out what his online name could be because I told him he couldn't use his real name because that's not good online safety. And so uh, you'll you'll see because he, he he has a random name that he says at the beginning, which Love makes no that. sense, but it's very funny. All right. Well, here we go. Jimmy is going to teach you how to play thug, uh, Flux. <laughs> nearly, I nearly, nearly <laughs> said that wrong. I was close. I didn't, but I came close. <laughs> Starlet. So, I am going to show you this game. Okay? So, uh, let me do It's monster flux. So, these guys run around. So, so if you, so if you want to play a flux game, you have to. This is how you win: a keeper and a keeper. But if you have a creeper, you can't win. But this game, you can win automatically. Not if somebody takes away the keepers. You have to read all the cards if you're like a big kid. So, this game, you have, uh, so these guys won a game. They had a keeper that's zombies and the, a stone that has a skeleton on it. And they have that gold card, so they win. So they won. There's, there's. I'll go get another game. Give me a second. Pirate Flux. It has creepers, but not the monster flux. So this, you can. It wins the same way as that, but it has creepers in it. So if you, if there's something that has a mad, that is black and hit, it has this face on it. That's a creeper. So you have to like. You have to get, if you have a creeper, you can't win. But if you have a goal, like this game, if you have this 
all of these cards, but this, if you have a keeper, or a, if you have a keeper in the gold that matches that, you might get to win. But if somebody does this to you and it does that, you like does like oh, no 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 <laughs> because you you might cry but don't cry it's okay because I was playing monster trucks once and I almost won but I did because my dad took away the card that I needed to win but then he just said I could have another way to win so that I'm going to go get the last game of flux. But back, so Batman flux, you can win with creepers. Joker's a creeper, right? And the Batmobile in that goal has a creeper on this. So you can win, but not if somebody takes away your card. Don't cry. Like I said earlier, don't cry. Okay? I got all the flux games I got here, but there's one more. Give me a second. This works the same way as this one. See? But it doesn't have the same cards. So if you have the dinosaur and that guy, the that, that guy plus the dinosaurs, and you have the gold, that means you can win. That is not a bad guy. That is not. Okay. Just because that looks black on the screen, it's because it's black on right here. It's not a creeper. Now, you know. I'm showing, I'm, I have a game channel. So I show you games and I might play them. Okay? Bye! That was <laughs> supremely solid advice. <laughs> Don't that cry. Don't cry. Don't. Don't cry. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jimmy. Also, Jimmy, real life that was... often. Come on, dude. Um. Yeah, stealing cards. He is ruthless. He's a ruthless game player. Like his favorite thing to do when playing games, regardless of how old you are, is to screw you over royally. <laughs> Like the guy is Munchkin is a very favorite game of his. He likes that game a lot. Uh, is he like the guy in Settlers who will trade with you, then put the thief on your spot and steal from you back the card they traded you? 100%. He's that guy. Yeah. I fucking hate him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, Matt loves to win. Surprise, surprise. Um, <laughs> okay. Let's round out. You got 15 or just over 15 minutes, ladies. Uh, we had the news that Emma's Field is being rebuilt for Season 3. Mm -hmm. That does imply uh, very strongly that we are getting the Battle of the Two Rivers. You cannot have the Battle of the Two Rivers without Gaul and Bane and Chiad being there with Perrin and Fael, I think. Note to anyone in the chat who hasn't reached this part in the books yet. Ta-ta. Spoiler time. <clears throat> I mean, to be fair, there is a banner rolling across the screen at all times saying... Nobody reads the banner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes he changes the banner. Be careful. Yeah. Um, I have a theory on, like, Fail and Bane and Chiad and that relationship. My theory is that what if in season two, we get introduced to Fael as like an injured hunter for the horn that the um, maidens come across as, the, as they're like questing across looking for the dragon reborn. And Fael takes the pl place of the maiden who gets healed and ends up dying like not that much <laughs> later anyway and Fael like and Ben and Chia all meet that way because they basically like save her life and then and 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 it might be kind of a little bit of the reverse of the Perrin Gaul situation which we kind of already had the Aiel in the cage so it would be weird if it happens again 
Anyway, that's um, that's my theory about how they introduce Fael. And you're saying that will be in season two? I think that's going to be in season two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I think you have to introduce all of them in season two for it to make sense for all of those relationships to develop into what they are in season three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially if we're getting the Son of Tear in season two. Right? Because they all have to kind of be there. I just, okay, this is going to sound crazy coming from me, but I am not entirely sure that Bane and Shied and Gaul have to be in the two rivers for that battle. Mm. Like, I want them to be, but if I was writing the show, I would be thinking about whether they have to be or not. Because really, that battle is mostly about the two rivers, Perrin, the White Cloaks, and Fael. And, like, Gaul and Bane and Shied don't really... I don't know. Uh, other than closing the waygate with Loyal, like mm -hmm. Gaul and Loyal going off to close the waygate, they don't really play that much of an important role. They're they're just there to like support Fael and Perrin. Mm -hmm. So I think we will see them all in season two. I like your idea a lot, Mel, but I don't know if they will be in the two rivers. So if you were thinking of like a significant way to introduce them that made them matter where would you where would you bring them into the story well i think they're going to be introduced with avienda as part of the group of maidens that she's with i honestly don't know if they're going to have a significant part in the story they're pretty like I want them again, like I don't want that, but I just think about like how much time they have and how the way that they change things in season one. I just don't know that they're going to have like a front and center role. They might have there might be like a nod to them or there might be like a joke here and there or mm -hmm. but I don't know that they're going to be main characters. Yeah. Well what's interesting about them is they are such good guides to Aiel culture. Yeah. Um, mm. Just as a character, like they make very, they're very quick ways to kind of talk about things in Aiel culture without going into info dumping. Like, yeah. So be an interesting choice, like if they, if they take out Bane and Jihad and Gaul, or if they change them, that does mean that that role might have to go somewhere else. Um, but yeah, cause just like they're, I find a lot of the, what's fascinating about their interactions is always like the miscommunications. Like one of my favorite scenes, like that oddly sticks out in my head is um, when they meet Marin Elvier and they do the little roof mistress ceremony. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, cool. Like I just, that those little things in the book are what always make me very happy. Yeah. Rajesh agrees with you. I, yeah. I want that scene mm -hmm. too, because I, yeah, I love that little like culture insight, but mm -hmm. it would be, um, I could see them, I mean, like, how many maidens can you really have in the show, right? Right. If you think about it. Like, I could see them. What if what if they combined, like, Sulin and Bane and, like, Adara and Chiad, you know? And, like, they, they mm -hmm. gave them, they could be first sisters who, like, love each other but also have a conflict because they both want to have leadership over... You know, they could they could combine all of those together mm -hmm. <clears throat> and kind of give more beefy meatiness to them by by giving them other people's roles. Not that not that I don't I mean, clearly I want all of the maidens to be on the show, like the entire horde of them and all of their names to be said and everybody right. knows who they are <laughs> because they're all amazing. But um but yeah, it, it would be interesting to figure out how they would combine them. I think I think I think their significance like to the story and the plot is is similar to how the like step in Kareni does that mm. foreshadowing for the yep. first sister notes, right? Like you yeah. still you still need to have like an understanding of the significance of that to like kind of hope for and wish for that kind of relationship to develop between Elaine and Avienda later on down the line. Yeah. I'm also yeah. wondering if 
So here's the thing. What if they skip the Battle of the Two Rivers? Like, what if they're rebuilding it for season three because the Two Rivers just doesn't appear at all in season two? Um, and oh, they is- are. That's that's what that's, that's what, what we're they're saying. building for. Yeah, oh, okay. it's not in season. We're saying two. like, how do they get from season two to the Battle of Two Rivers in season three? Mm-hmm. Oh, gotcha. Because I sorry, I think I think I was assuming like the Battle of Two Rivers would happen in season two, and then I'm like, that feels fast. No, no, no. Because yeah. yeah, they're just building it right now. So they've gotcha. already filmed. All my videos where me being wrong is just recorded. <laughs> <laughs> it's humbling. It um, yeah. It, it, it's. I think that the other two maidens that are with Avienda have to be Ben and Chied. The ones in season two that we saw in the, in the, in the behind the scenes. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll be really sad if it's not. Me too. Yeah. I mean, I think we saw at least eight maidens training. In that, do you remember that like? Yes. Oh yeah. That yeah. like uh, the stunt stunt crew. Yeah, video? the stunt crew. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. But in the in the in the really super teaser craziness, we only saw three in costume. Yeah. Yeah. Including and. Avienda was mm. one. Yes, that one. Mm. Is I, I, a little beat up there. Sorry? She looks a little beat up there. Avienda? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She looks yeah. like she's got a leg has been injured or something. Mm-hmm. I believe they zoomed in and uh, yep. it looked like uh, she, you know, they'd all suffered from some form of, you know, skirmish or something of that nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, so I understand what you're saying about maybe not having them go to the two rivers in season three, uh, Ben and Shed, but I would push back a little bit with Gaul. You know, like saying, "Oh, he's not that important," and it's got nothing to do with the uh, the gateway um, because you know we don't even have gateways currently. So, um, but I would say that Gaul's decision to go with Perrin. Um, you know, obviously stems from how they meet in the books. And then their friendship is, frankly, a very large part of why Perrin ends up being able to do a lot of the things he does. Because, you know, there, there are times where, you know, he takes Gaul with him into the world of dreams. And, you know, literally, Gaul's the reason he survives, <laughs> you know, things of that nature. Um, and their bond and their friendship is something that I think requires good groundwork to make it work mm-hmm. for the, if they, if they, if they have that for the whole show, you know, so he's there with him all the way, then you need to build the proper groundwork in for that. And I think you can't do that unless he goes to the two rivers with parent. He chooses, I'm not going to hang out with all my other fellow Aiel. I'm going to follow this wetlander to his home. Mm-hmm. and help him and support him. And I think that, you know, if you don't do that, then you just eradicate their friendship for the entire show. Or you should be eradicating their friendship for the entire show. And then, in which case, you should basically just eradicate Gaul. Yeah. If Gaul is in the show, then he should absolutely go to the Two Rivers with Perrin. I just yeah. am not sure that he will be, mm-hmm. sadly. That's well, really he wasn't sad. in the cage, at least. Yes, we know he wasn't that in he the wasn't. cage. He is not yeah. dead. Sarian. <laughs> yes, it was Sarian. <laughs> um, I, I think Perrin in the show is going to need a friend who's not Matt and Rand, you know, in order to like develop who he is. Mm-hmm. But it it might. You're right. It might not be Gaul. Maybe it's Elias. Maybe Elias has a bigger role, you know? Maybe maybe it's Avienda. Or maybe it's oh yeah, from the script. Maybe it's Avienda, but she she doesn't get to spend all that much time with him. Yeah. If they stick closer to the story. Which it seems like Rafe was indicating they want he wanted to, right? Yeah. We have a, a question. Uh, I feel only wise. Uh, well, only I can answer. If a stone dog is in a cage, does that make it a kennel? <laughs> well, 
Pathfinders just aren't learning very quickly, are they? Um, yeah. like stone dogs in cages, like it's kind of an oxymoron because they would get locked in like an open field. Right. <laughs> then we, there'd be kennels all over the place if, yeah. uh, if that was the case. Lost in the way of eggs. Yeah, it's, you know what? I know this isn't what we're talking about, but I think I like the Wheel of Time. One of the reasons being like the, the examples of friendships in the book. Like sometimes in, in fantasy, friendships can feel very like, we are epic buddies on an epic quest. And it's like all about the epicness, but this is like legitimately like, I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, it's, it's just, it's so, I don't know. I like the friendships in the books. They strike me as very, very authentic in as much as they can be in a world where people channel magic. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, I do hope they have Perrin and Gaul together. I think it is a good friendship. I mean, I would love it if Perrin and Gaul got together, but I know that's not going to happen. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be interesting what they do with Avienda. If, yeah. they make her, if they make her not be a wise one, that would make me pretty mad. Because I, I think, not that I've had any indication of that, but I'm just like, if she replaces Gaul, does she become a wise one? Like, mm. Mm. what happens to her arc then? It could, I mean, it could be that she runs away with Perrin to the two mm. rivers to try and escape her responsibilities of having to give mm. up the spear and right. become a wise one. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. We'll find her. Yeah. I know. That's the thing. It's like you can't run from your responsibilities. Yeah, this is you true. can't run from the wise ones. They nope. know you. They know you, dot of light. All right. Shall we ask chat to vote on whether they think uh, our threesome will go to the two rivers in season three? Okay. I'm curious to see yes. the chat thinks. Yeah. I always mm. find the speculation so hard because I, I don't know what they're going to do and I'm so bad at guessing. Mm. Like I am notoriously bad at guessing things. I don't think I've yeah, ever Yeah, but I don't them. think you have to... I think sometimes the fun of just like imagining what could be is part of it. Mm. You know, not trying to like find the right answer, just trying to like explore all the different scenarios mm. yeah. that could could come up. And, and they don't necessarily have to be the ones that they choose, but the exploration, I think, is what, what is interesting to me in a world that we know so well, where yeah. so many different ways, can it can spin so many ways. Yeah. So it folks can. in chat are saying that Avienda has to go to the Waste with Rand, but does she have to? Um, only is there if a reason going they to absolutely... become a wise one? Yeah, if she started they... the wise one training, then yeah. yeah. But if they took if that they away, didn't... yeah. Or they, it doesn't have to be at necessarily the same time Rand is there, though. Mm -hmm. They could do it at different times. Uh, yeah, I suppose then it just becomes like, a, you know, um, how effective is it in the story to go back to the waste? just to send Avienda to Rudy on when you've already gone to the waste one time in the show to send Rand there. So I suppose from yeah. a logistics but you're and not just sending Rand there, you're sending Rand and Matt and Maureen yeah. and Avienda. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. It seems the economy of Ruidian, that first pass at Ruidian at least, is is pretty impactful for one. Yeah. yeah. And if they're going to have seen element, right? Yeah. Yeah. If they're going to have Rand and Avienda end up together, then they need to spend time together too. So this is true. With him and then if you, if you think about a subsequent trips or trip to Beridion and um, what happens to her yeah. if, and don't take her on that journey, that's a massive, you know, piece to, of the ending. Yeah. That, I mean, you could not put in if you wanted to, but would probably leave the Aiel as a, a general plot point kind of flailing towards the end there, wouldn't it? Yeah. If they didn't mm. have some kind of purpose there. So. Yeah. 
That's a good point. In some ways, it's easier to go backwards from the end and kind of figure out what might happen because like that absolutely, in my mind, that has to happen with when she goes the second time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so if she goes the second time, you have to set it up a first time. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I think we're worrying for nothing because yeah. Rafe has explicitly said he would be a ma maiden. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's true. Of all the characters <laughs> that he would get rid of in the show, right. the maiden's probably on the chopping, chopping block the least. Mm -hmm. I know. He's not always the end decision maker, though. Right. There's other people that are this gonna, is true yeah true yeah. but it's but it's fun to speculate so yeah yeah, yeah. so we'll, we'll have to revisit this after we've seen season two and be like so this is what we were thinking these oh, yeah. here's, my, here's my bold here's my bold theory that's gonna okay be right. i'm gonna bold theory it avienda does not become a wise one and instead meets elaine and they have a relationship exclusive of Rand, except maybe Elaine and Rand have like a political relationship, but aren't necessarily as much in love. So Avian just ends up not dating Rand, not in the threefold land, and just hooks up with Elaine and they are happily gay forever. <laughs> I love this. Love How it yeah. should have <laughs> And yeah, she, I think you're right about that. she becomes Elaine's warder, not Brigida. Exactly. Ooh. Brigida does something else. She, and Brigida she runs off the map. Yes, and yes. then we don't have two on. Water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we don't have two on. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. We can we'll, we'll have two on. We, no, no, we have two on. We have two on, but she's not. She, you know, her and Matt don't get married. Right. You know what? Elaine is green. She has two borders. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. True. Yes. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. Okay. Oh yeah, Min did mention three. Oh <sighs> uh, yeah, okay. Min. He can just yeah. pick up a couple of us on the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of Oops. people to choose from. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out with us tonight uh, while we send the you know our mothers to jail and uh, have plus four charisma and um, poise and whatever else it was. And we love Monopoly more than anything else. And um, yeah, look, see, El Screw is still three, by the way. So uh, don't forget that, folks. Uh, mm. For Rad. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I hope we managed to pull it back from the chaos that was going on there for about, I don't know, half the show. Um, <laughs> Did we though? Did we really? It got a, we got a little <laughs> more controlled towards the end, yeah. Um, so Please. thank you for joining us. <laughs> Ladies, it's always a pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's not my birthday. <laughs> it will be. I'm just going to end the show. I'm not even going to play the outro. I'm just going to hit the end button. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> you didn't say goodbye properly. I know. That's why I stopped. So um, <laughs> thank you, everyone. Uh, I hope you have fun. Please, once the live stream is finished, go to the video and comment with your games of choice um and why uh and three ladies that ran should be hooking up with besides avienda elaine and min give us a trio of other combinations um and uh we will <laughs> we'll see you next time uh but until then may you always find love water and shade so bye bye, bye.